Welcome to The Bean Pod. This is your place for all things stocks and crypto. From beginner tips to expert picks, use this as fuel for your investing journey. Because when you're in the know, your money will grow. The Bean Pod is presented by Dowmaker, the top crypto launchpad in the industry. Dowmaker allows people to participate in top crypto projects before they launch and generate some of the best returns you can find anywhere. They also provide growth solutions for crypto projects that are looking for funding and assistance with marketing. With their revolutionary new public strongholder offerings, everyone can get early access to top crypto projects regardless of their net worth. Dowmaker is rapidly disrupting the venture capital industry. If you're interested, head over to dowmaker.com to learn more. Welcome to the Bean Pod. This is Shane, aka the Jolly Green Investor. And this is Josh, the Nifty Investor. Today, we're going to be talking about green energy stocks. Because with the global energy crisis right now, this is where the entire world would be turning to right now. 100%. I mean, with renewable energies are going to trend imminently. So the names we're going to discuss in this episode are super important to put on your watch list. Who would have thought that a war over in Ukraine would have caused or is going to cause green energy stocks to fly? You know, you have Russia, which is a major exporter of oil. You would think, oh, the the oil is being cut off from Russia. So then oil stocks should be cr- crushing it. Why then is green energy the place to look to at the moment? Well, I think right now what you're seeing is that all energy stocks and commodities, everything in that sector is ripping. So we saw the price of oil go to the highest it's been in a long time. Natural gas stocks have been flying. Then you saw wheat and gold and silver and everything. So I think everything in the energy and commodity sector is flying. But when you look at the charts of these green energy and renewable companies we're going to discuss today, they're so low right now. And I feel like the hype is down. They're in despair. And we always talk about this on our channels and the Discord. The time to get into positions is in despair. And the green energy is in despair right now. Everything is, every sector is cyclical. You will see them rebound at times. And I think at this time last year, we did see a bit of a spike in the green energy sector. And it, we might be ready for another boost right here, I think. For sure. I mean, the world now realizes they have to get off of fossil fuels, you know, f- place, things that are coming from countries like Russia, and green energy can step into that that spot. So here's a couple of quick stats I have to start off the episode to yeah. make, make you understand how important these green energy stocks are. So renewables are set to account for almost 95% of the increase in global power capacity through 2026, with solar being half of that, Right. So $3.4 trillion is going to be invested globally in renewable energy over the next eight years. And the global electric vehicle market is anticipated to grow from just over $250 billion now to over $1.3 trillion within six years. Right. Crazy numbers. That's the money numbers. is going to pour in and these stocks are going to be the benefit. So if you're a long-term thinker, a long-term investor, these are going to be some hot plays that you're going to want to potentially sink some money into. Awesome. Um, I th- really think, you know, with... What occurred in Russia and what's happening right now with the oil prices, oil prices are skyrocketing, right? As everybody knows. So it's really highlighted that we we need energy security, we need energy independence, we need energy storage. And you get that with green energy stocks. Absolutely. All right. Green energy companies. Green energy companies. Let's do it. Let's jump right into it. My first one is Plug Power. So Plug Power, been one of my favorite green energy names for probably two years now. They make hydrogen fuel cell systems that replace conventional batteries in electric vehicles and also equipment. Um, So they they were one of the pioneers of hydrogen fuel cell technology. Their flagship product right now is, this has kind of gotten them into the market, gotten eyes on them, is electric uh, vehicle versions of forklifts. So their big customers include Amazon, Walmart, Home Depot, you know, hundreds of thousands of forklifts across the USA and the, and the world. And that's just their first product. So these guys, yeah, plug. I love, I love them. Where are they trading at, at the moment? Do you have that? Do you have that on hand or? Um, they're, they're trading a hell of a lot lower than yeah. they were. I think they yeah. were up near the 40, $50 a share. And right. now they're maybe single digits. Mm. So, you know, you look at that chart, it went way up last year and it's come way down. Um, and you know, if you look at the company, they're expanding, they're building new plants, they're launching new products. So they've just partnered with uh, one of the big uh, motor companies in South Korea to develop a hydrogen fuel cell powered bus, which is going to be rolled out across South Korean cities right. this year and moving forward. Right. They're building new plants in America. Um, honestly, like the roadmap for this company, they're just getting started. Mm. And it's always one of the big names that's brought up in the green energy discussion. So Plug Power is one of my, one of my top ones. Yeah, you've been talking about that one for, for a while, especially in the Discord. You know, I've... I think like every couple months, you're like, hey guys, plug power, you know, plug, plug, plug. And it's great. Like it's, 
a company that we've both been following. It, would you say is ChargePoint uh, a potential ChargePoint is um, would, not competitor. I would say ChargePoint is. Um, I mean, ChargePoint's electric vehicle charging stations. Yeah. Plug makes the batteries okay. that go into the uh, the vehicles, right? Right. Um, and one last point about Plug, their uh, 2022 goal for their sales between 900 and 925 million, which represents almost 100% year on year growth from last year. Okay. So they're growing quickly because they're just starting. So yeah. Plug, at the, especially if they're current prices with the chart, Plug is my top pick. Okay, I like it. What do you got? Um, so I'm going to get into, we, we talked about how, you know, the, the renewable energy sector is set to double. You know, it's going to go from 800 billion to 1900 billion over the next several years here, right? So that's going to be wind. We're going to get solar energy. And so you think of like, what goes into these solar panels? What about the, the, <clears throat> the transistors? The, all the stuff that converts this, the sun into energy. So I'm looking at semiconductors. Right. So I found one. It was ON Semiconductor Corp. Right? Trades under, trades under the ticker ON. So this is needed for every solar cell out there. Basically, the light shines through the cell, goes to the semiconductor, and that conducts it into the electricity. So this is man mandatory. We talk about semiconductors on a global stage, how it's needed for absolutely everything. Who would have thought it's needed to convert sunlight into electricity? Yeah, I like it. And not only the fact that they're, they're building the integral component for all solar energy, right? Yeah. So you're not going after the panel manufacturer or you know the software or whatever. These guys are integrated into every part of it with the semiconductor. They also get used used in the inverters as well. Um, so this is a Fortune 100 company. I want to bring this one up first um, because this is like more one of those one of those safer plays for people out there who want to invest in like a Nike, you know, a, an Amazon, a Google, ON semiconductors, a Fortune 100 company. It benefits from solar, wind, hydroelectric uh, power. And it's 2020, 2021 revenue is up again somehow this massive company up 28%. Wow. You know, it's just crazy. And they're operating income and cash flows up six times. I like so it. a company that's already smashing it in the world is still smashing it. And it's going to dr be driven even further with yeah, the that, demand for green energy. The tailwinds for sure. Yeah. Especially with that, the, the stat that I brought up at the start of the episode with solar accounting for 50% of the renewable growth moving forward. That's a gem for sure. Yeah. Uh, next one I have is STEM Energy. So this is the first public pure play smart energy storage company. Um, so they make smart energy battery solutions um, for renewable energy generation and building clean power grids. Uh, so their customers already include a bunch of Fortune 500 companies, Facebook, AMC, Adobe, The Gap, all the huge hotel chains, uh, Whole Foods, all these companies that are, you know, refrigerating things or, you know, hotel, you can imagine the energy storage and capacity needs for hotels. They're all switching to these smart energy grids and that's what STEM builds. Um, so not only do they offer the software solutions that power the entire, say, for example, a hotel, um, they also make the hardware. So they have solar panel integration, electric vehicle charging systems that all, they, they're building like full scale platforms for institutions, mm. for commercials, for warehouses, hotels, that kind of stuff. And all these companies are going to be switching from the old school energy to smart energy, green energy. And not only are the, as, as STEM providing the software and the hardware, they're also providing massive cost savings because of their, like their software platform. So they've, they're like an all around operator for green energy, smart storage. Um, I love the concept. And just the fact that they're already working with all these top companies already Makes it a gem for me. When you say smart storage, is it learn like would, is it learning like when to shut things off or exactly right? yeah? Okay. So you know they have these AI tools that say you know automatically bring the power down or the lights are going down at certain times. Before you know back in the day, it's all done manually. Make sure to switch the light off. Yeah, so it recognizes if somebody's in the room or not. Yeah, the light will just turn off or the temperature in the house if it starts to climb. Like exactly. All these, yeah. So for STEM to come to a company and propose switching to their systems, um, it's a no brainer. When they right. see the cost savings, the renewable energy, um, it's just, it has so many tailwinds behind it. I love it. It's, it's saving companies money and helping them get clean energy. And mm. I think that's going to be a huge, huge factor over the next like 10 years. And, and big partnerships. Yeah. With those companies. So fourth quarter, uh, their most recent quarterly report, they increased revenue 185% to just over 50 million. So they're small, but they're growing rapidly. We're just at the start here of the green energy revolution. So companies like Plug and Stem that are focusing on the batteries and the storage, they're the ones I'm betting on. 
Well, that goes in, that ties into what we, what we said at the beginning, energy security, independence and storage. Because if we have an outage or a blockage, you want to have energy that you can, you can go back to at a later date. For sure. All right. What do you got next? All right. So solar, we're talking about solar. Why solar? All right. European households are currently paying 54% more for energy at the moment. Electricity prices have risen substantially. Wow. All right. So the global market is expected to increase from 182 billion to 900 billion by 2028. Only 4% of the addressable 77 million homes in the US have solar. Uh, what percent? Four. Four. Four percent. Damn. So let's look at a massive opportunity for growth here, right? Massive sector for growth. The EU relies heavily on Russian oil and gas, makes up for 40 and 25% of what they're currently using. So Let's look to solar. Solar's looking big right now. The company I have on my list right now is called Sunrun. Trades under the ticker RUN. It's had its highest growth rate in five years in terms of installs. 31% growth in new installs. So word of mouth is getting out there. They recognize them as a good brand. It's a company that people are, you know, calling up. I used to work in the solar industry right. when I was in Australia. Everybody has solar over there. Were you one of the guys like going door to door, knocking on people's doors? I did everything. Them? Yeah, I did it. I, That's I, such a tough job. <laughs> build resilience, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, and then I'd also go on the meetings and into people's homes and whatnot. And like, but you actually got to see how much these people save on their energy bills. It's insane. So yeah. if you're not getting solar, I don't know, you're crazy. Um, so that, that's that, that's the best tagline. That's right all I can say. Like you you're need, not, if you're not getting solar, I can't believe it. You're crazy. Yeah, you need. <laughs> that's the new tagline for the Nifty Investors Solar Company. It's just you come up on the screen. If you're not getting solar, you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So their um, their average contract is 17 years for customers. Wow. Massive. Uh, backlog orders, seven, 57% growth in their backlog of orders. So they, they can't even keep up with the demand they're yeah. seeing right now, right? Always a good sign. Um, you know, they run fixed rate solar as a subscription. This is the biggest thing. You were talking about automotive and all this, right? So they have a partnership with Ford. So, so Ford is doubling down on their F-150 electric, uh, electric vehicle production next year. Customers need the chargers, these guys are going to be the, the number one resource for the chargers for the Ford. So you know how Tesla has its own EV chargers? Yep. That's what this company is going to be doing for Ford. Cool. Yeah. Again, you're looking at a company that's really beat down. It's trading at a third of its all-time high. I like it. Yeah. I like it. Very cool. All right. Next up. You know what? I think I'm gonna, this is this is a gem. It's not one a typical one you'd think for green energy. Save it for the so end. So I'm going to save it for the end. Okay, good. Um, sorry. So the next one I'm going to say is what you actually already mentioned earlier. It's ChargePoint. Okay. Uh, charge point for me they're the basically the global leader in electric vehicle charging stations so you think gas stations for old cars these guys are going to have the biggest global network of charging stations um and if you look at all the tailwinds oil prices are insane people are going to be buying electric cars they need to charge them now a significant amount of charging is done at home but as the infrastructure improves people will feel better about doing road trips and longer trips in cars and they're going to need to charge their cars you can download the ChargePoint app, go to any of their stations, which are going to be at gas stations or at malls or wherever, and use their services. That's um, one of the biggest things, right? Because so I'm thinking, you know, just not to cut you off there, yeah. is the app or a the ability to find where the ChargePoint stations are because you know where gas stations are. They're everywhere. Yeah. But if I'm buying an electric vehicle, I'm kind of nervous, like, I guess you'd eventually figure out where all the charge points are, but yeah, I mean, eventually nope. Google maps will surely have that yeah. integrated. Cause again, we're so early. You always have to remind yourself how early you are in this. Um, so for me, um, investing in an electric vehicle charging company is probably a decent idea to add to your green energy portfolio. There are a few competitors. So blink is another, um, popular one. Um, but the difference between charge point and blink is charge point actually makes money, has money in the bank and is profitable blink. Although they kind of trade with the sector up and down, if you look at the books and you look at the quarterly earnings reports, it is not a good company. They have no path to profitability. So I'm choosing charge point over blink every time their quarterly revenue has increased 90% year over year record annual revenue because they're still growing. They have over 175,000 ports um, already activated. And most of their ports right now, I think maybe a third are in Europe. You know, Europe's always a little bit ahead with the smaller cars and electric and stuff like that. Yeah. So they've already got their foothold in Europe, but the big opportunity obviously is in America. Um, so they expect annual revenue this year of around 500 million. 
Um, so look, for me, charging stations, electric vehicles, I'm going with ChargePoint. I like it. All right, so back, I'm going to stick with the stol- solar here for a minute because uh, I did buy some Sunrun previously. Because if you're not getting solar, you're, <laughs> you're crazy. crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Man, save the, save the planet, yeah, right? And uh, right. make some money while you're investing in these companies as well. So we, the other one is Enphase. Yeah. Enphase, sorry. E-N-P-H. They do residential and commercial uh, storage, um, solar, residential and commercial solar, and they also do storage as well. So it's the batteries that they're also doing. Cool. This is one thing that I really like about them. So we talk about energy independence, energy security, energy storage. They have these IQ batteries that allow ho- homeowners to save their power and use it at a later date. So when you have a climate disaster or, you know, Russia goes AWOL again, you have an opportunity to dial into your power versus relying on the power grid itself and, you know, power in your fridge and your electronics and all these other things, especially when you start to maybe look into cybersecurity attacks or, you know, the solar flares, like whatever could potentially happen that yeah, cuts yeah. out the power, right? So fiscal year 2021 revenue was up 78% year over year. They have double digit growth in the EU with new manufacturing facilities coming out. Um, this one looks like an absolute banger in terms of it was trading at $400 per share uh, a few months ago. And now it's trading at 175 mm-hmm. and it's, it's starting to tick up volume starting to pour in. I think it's another huge solar play to jump into. For sure. I mean, there's going to be tailwinds coming across the entire solar sector. So at the end of the day, most of the solar names will see a rise if this happens like we think. But it's important to get into the right names because those are the ones that have longevity, right? Yeah. We're looking at the, the earnings reports. We're looking at their growth prospects. Those are the names that are going to stick around. And th- that's why we're talking about them today. Yeah, right? I went through probably, you know, 10 to 15 different solar companies. And these were the two that really stuck out. Yep. I find, you know, maybe like end phase is a bit safer than Sunrun. But Sunrun could also, you know, give you a higher return. Yeah. But the cash flows there, the revenues there, you know, they're doing all the right things. So Enphase has always been one of the top names on my solar watch list. All yeah. right. Next, I have kind of a fun one. Okay. Um, it is Arkimoto. They make recreational electric, electric vehicles. They make these cool looking like three wheeled kind of roadsters um, that retail for, I think, under $20,000. Yeah, About cheap. Eight, yeah. $18,000. And that's a full car. Uh, You can take it on the highways, you can take it on the roads, you charge it up, you don't have to pay insane oil prices. And for most people that are just driving to work on their own, it's enough. Um, They look really cool and they're also going to be branching out. So they've got, I think, an e-bike type product coming out. Uh, They've been discussing, I don't know, possibly e-golf carts, all kinds of recreational EVs. You know, you can make uh, electric quad bikes, whatever. Uh, So this company, I think, is in a great spot to take over that small segment of electric vehicles. And when it, you know, when you talk about renewable energy stocks and green energy stocks, obviously electric vehicles come to mind. We, we love Tesla, you know, Tesla's, you know, number one, when it comes to the other electric vehicle companies, I wanted to put one on this list. But when I thought about what was happening in the electric vehicle sector with GM and Ford and BMW and Audi, they're all bringing out their electric vehicles. So I'm hesitant to include one of those in my top five because I think the traditional manufacturers are really going to dominate electric vehicles Mm -hmm. rather than all these, you know, there's Fisker, there's all these, I mean, some of them will survive for sure. Yeah. But I think the smarter money is with those conventional ones. That's why I picked Arkimoto because they're not competing with the, the main car companies. Right. They're producing something completely different at a different price point for different uses. Mm. Um, And I also think it had a massive run up last year when it got hype. It's, it's kind of a fun one because what the product is, it's fun. Um, they're super early. They've just started shipping their products. And I think we see a run in electric vehicles. Arkimoto, ticker FUV, is one to watch. Yeah, and you know, maybe with smaller household sizes and whatnot, you don't really necessarily need a massive vehicle. And it gets you from point A to point B. You know, in a community that we live in, we don't really have to travel too far to where we're going. And you don't need a massive vehicle. So something like this would make a lot of sense for even people in the city, you know? Yeah, you don't I mean, have to travel too far. You're traveling your, your five kilometers or whatnot. It doesn't take up too much space. Easy to park. Parking. Yeah. Parking cost, oil cost, gas cost. It's all a headache. And by spending $18,000 for an Arkhamoto Roadster, you can solve a lot of that. So I think I think they're going to sell some Roadsters. Might have to pick myself up one here mm-hmm. after the episode. Because if you're not in solar, you're an <laughs> you're idiot. Crazy. <laughs> you're, crazy. you're crazy, right? <laughs> all right, what do you got next? <laughs> <laughs> all right, I do have one I'm going to save for the very, very end. Okay. It's, uh, you know... 
something I, it's like a, it's almost like a penny stock, but it's not a penny stock and they're it's really unique. And I think it's really going to save the planet. I like it. If they can make it happen, they have a massive backing as well. Um, but I, I do want to jump into uranium and nuclear energy because nuclear energy is, it's looking like one of the cleanest forms of energy on the planet. You know, they, I understand there could be some nuclear reactors, you know, what we saw in Fukushima and you know, all these other aspects of nuclear, but in terms of if you can manage it correctly and have it produce the energy that we're looking for. So nuclear, I, I just found a really interesting stat before we start the episode. So nuclear is a zero, just for anybody who doesn't know why nuclear, because you hear nuclear and it sounds like terrifying, yeah. right? You, you think, think Homer Simpson, donuts. Yeah, and, nuclear bombs, yeah. like all these things. So what is nuclear energy? All right, nuclear is a zero emission clean energy source. It generates power through fission, which is the process of splitting uranium. And why I want to say this because I'm going to talk about uranium stocks. Uranium stocks. Splitting uranium atoms to produce energy. The heat released by the fission is used to create steam, then spins the turbines, generates electricity. So I looked into this ETF. Uh, it's called Global X Uranium, URA. Uh, broad range of companies in uranium, mining, and production of nuclear components. Um, their volume has tripled. So money is, smart money is starting to pour into this now. Um, th- so the way I went through, I was like, okay, this is a safe play if you want to, you know, have your money spread across a whole bunch of uranium plays. But then I went into, who are they holding? And I saw their largest holding, They ha- 23% of their holdings is in, uh, sorry if I'm pr- pronouncing this incorrectly, is, Cameco Corp trades under the ticker CCJ. Mm-hmm. This is the world's largest publicly traded uranium company. So they have 18% of the world's production of uranium. Wow. Yeah. So they've increased their dividends 50% to 12 cents per share, which I found really interesting. You talk about inflation rates, rising um, interest rates, right? So we have all these things going on where if you can invest in this company, you're getting 12 cents per share mm. in a sector that is growing demand. They have $1.2 billion in cash on hand. They've already been around for 30 years. All their contracts are long-term. These are huge long-term contracts that they have in place. Uh, Russia accounts for 16% of the U.S. imports of uranium. So if we keep seeing sanctions and seeing Russia get cut off, and this is the, the world's largest producer, this could be even, they could take their, their percentage even further if Russia is 16% tack on another, you know, five or whatever percentage from this onto their already leading. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah. No, absolutely. Uh, I just filmed a video on this uh, just before this podcast about uranium stocks because I just got into Denison Mines, DNN, which is another uranium stock that I really like. There's an incoming supply shock shortage for uranium because, yeah. as you said, they're about to sanction Russia, who is, I don't know, 15 or 20 percent of the world's uranium. Yep. It is a clean energy. Um, so when you're looking at clean energy stocks with macro trends, at the tailwind. Yeah, so uh, Denison Mines is one I liked as well. Um, so the, the, the reason you want to look into these is because there are massive power grids that are always going to be running on from these nuclear reactors. And the reactors need to be filled every 18 to 24 months. So you're going to c- continuously need uranium. Right. Right. So these are looking like really strong plays, especially if more sanctions come in and Russia is being blocked from exporting their goods. I like it. Yeah. I like the nu- nuclear, um, the whole trend there. And that's a good pick. Other ones were Denison Mines I had. There was Uranium Royalty Corp. I uh, was like UUUU, I think was the ticker. Yeah, both but of these were also inside the ETF. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. All right, so for my final pick, which is kind of along the lines of what you were saying, mm. it's not one you'd think immediately is a green energy play, but it's Canadian Nickel Company. Right. And so it's a mining company, uh, but the reason I like it is because nickel is one of the most important ingredients for renewable energy and electric vehicle batteries. So the way that it's used is they mix it in with lithium for lithium batteries, which is the basically the most popular version for electric vehicle batteries. Mm-hmm. Um, so nickel is always going to be in demand. And I think as you look, you look at the chart of what electric vehicle demand is supposed to be over the next 100 years, and it's, you know, hockey stick like this. Yeah. Nickel is the same thing. So it's correlated. Um, Canadian nickel is one of the world's largest miner of nickel. Uh, some of the biggest properties in Canada, which is nickel rich. Recently, we just saw the price of nickel spike 100% because of what's going on in Russia. Again, supply shortages, they also produce it, those kind of reasons. So if you have a world, that's returning, a world that is turning to renewable energy, a spike in electric vehicle demand, a spike in nickel prices, I'm looking at Canadian nickel. Now they just did a share offering, which tanked the price a little bit. Mm. But to me, that's a good time to get in. 
because I see a lot of tailwinds and a lot of future growth prospects for one of the world's biggest nickel miners and nickel being one of the most important things for renewable energy. I like it. They probably raised, they probably, you know, provided more shares because they see what's the writings on the wall and they need to increase production. They need to increase, they need to increase enough to handle the demand that's coming down. And it makes sense to, you know, draw in more money at the moment to help with the expansions, right? Yeah, I think you're 100% right. Mm. They, they can see the writing on the wall. They're going to need to invest a ton in additional production, mining facilities, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Employees. Yeah. Not so, great short term, but great long term. Yeah, great, great long term. Yeah. And um, I think whenever you see a company that you believe in do an offering, it always tanks the price. But if you believe in the company, that's an opportunity to get in. If, you, if you're on the sidelines on your watch list, damn, I missed out on this company. They do an offering. Share price goes down 10%. That's a good opportunity. Yeah, that's great. I've had that on my watch list for a while now. I've been in and out. One of the other, the last thing I wanted to mention about Canadian Nickel, because there are other nickel companies yeah. that you could invest in. Uh, one thing I like about them is they are making a huge, uh, putting a huge onus on being carbon zero. So net zero nickel, cobalt, and iron products that they're doing. They're doing as much as they can to reduce the emissions and also do the carbon credits to make up for what they're doing. Right. So I like that. Cool. Yeah. All right, my last one, like I said, it's kind of like a penny stock. And I say this because it was at one point, it was trading in the, love a penny stock. the, pen, <laughs> in the penny range. Uh, but it's also been as high as $4. It's now trading at $2. Um, it's called Acre Carbon Capture. So this is like the only pure play carbon capture company on the entire market. It's backed by Acre Group, which is a massive billion dollar company. It's an investment firm that invests in green energy. Um, the reason I like these guys is because they're focused in Europe only at the moment, but they just announced plans to expand to the U.S., another absolutely massive market. So the option is carbon capture as a service. Basically, there's no way to currently avoid the CO2 that we pump into the atmosphere. They have this device that like goes over top of the, uh, the like what are they called? Like the, the big funnels that like pump out all the... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically it captures all that carbon mm. and then eliminates it for the company. So it's kind of interesting, right? Yeah, yeah. I like so it. So it's a sneaky little play out there. It doesn't it's a little bit different from solar and all, yeah. everything else we're talking about. This is like strictly capturing carbon. So. I like it. That's kind of like bonus pick. Is, yeah. Uh CEI, Camber Energy. Right. <laughs> Shout out Zach Morris, the, the king of pumping on Twitter. <laughs> he's he's that, running that's from kind the law, of, right? That's the kind of a, a sneaky green energy play, right? Because I think it's similar to carbon capture. I don't know exactly what CEI does. I think it's carbon capture. But I did take a swing trade on them last week and it went up 100%, <laughs> which I did post on Twitter and in the Discord. Yeah, if you're you did, in there, you, you know you that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, <laughs> sneaky bonus pick, also CEI. Yeah, Canberra so two energy. carbon captures, right? Because mm. we can't totally avoid it. We're still going to create carbon. We still need to you know, harness it. And if, this, if these guys can get big with a big backing, hey, you never know. Yeah, look, I love it. I mean, I am the Jolly Green investor. You are. The Jolly Green investor loves green energy stocks, electric yeah. vehicle stocks. I kind of, when I started doing videos and stuff, I was all about this for a while when it was trendy. I've tried to keep up, but right now it, it gets me excited that all this stuff is kind of coming back into the favor. I own a lot of these positions and I'm bullish for the future of green energy. So me too. So, hey, look, maybe everybody should tune into the next episode. Ooh, that one's going to be a banger. All views expressed by speakers on the Bean Pod are solely their opinions. You should not treat any opinion expressed on the Bean Pod as a specific inducement to make a particular investment or follow a specific strategy, but only as an expression of their opinion. This podcast is for informational purposes only.